All right, guys, welcome back to Strong Successful Mail. So for today, getting over this great email that was sent from a subscriber. This is a guy, he is close to being 50 years old, and he's going to share essentially his life story where it took where it took off since college, about where he started as a typical nice guy and got burned really badly, but learned the hard way to where he changed from that event and led him to be a no-nonsense strong, tough guy who has his life in order, doing well, and once he learned to stop being the type that put the girls on the pedestal, kissed their butts, but instead took charge, didn't take any crap, you get the point, all of a sudden everything changed dramatically for him in his life, and it's going well, and he's also married, but he has a wife who treats him like the king because she knows that he can replace her like this, doesn't take her crap, etc., etc. The way things ought to be. And they got a great marriage. But you're going to see in the beginning what he goes through and also, for the entertainment factor, the revenge he gets on this gal that does him wrong. It, it's definitely entertaining. So it's a really good story spanning of about 30 years of his life, where he started and where he is now in a great place. So it starts off, he says, Hi, SSM. I dated a woman in college for four years in the 1990s. After college, we moved in together. Big mistake. I was the typical nice guy. Society was projecting that men need to be the nice guy to women. I fell for that hook, line, and sinker. Well, we all did. Well, most of us. Most guys watching this, including me, did the same thing. And guess what? It got us nothing but heartache and frustration and embarrassment over and over until we learned differently. He says, I moved near her hometown, so even worse, she went to where she's from, not having to go where you're from. Already, you can see this is not good. I was the one who was working and financially supporting my girlfriend. He says, yeah, I know, big freaking mistake. Yes, another big mistake, but at least he admits it. Things were great for about six months. Then she became more and more distant from me, wanting to have more and more fights. Wanting to have more and more fights. Sounds like somebody likes drama. What I tell you guys is how all women like drama. Now, there's degrees of how much drama they like. Some like a little drama, keep things interesting. Some like a whole lot of drama. It sounds like she's the type that likes a whole lot of drama. Get rid of them. And by the way, he's paying the bills and she's starting fights. I noticed that she was being secretive on her computer, always putting up a screensaver when I came into the room. He said, back before smartphones and when email chat programs were the thing. She had a couple exes calling her, and of course, she said they were just friends. Society said men and women could be friends. I know I was young and dumb. No. No, 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 no. They can't be friends. It doesn't work that way because one always has an ulterior motive. The guy either wants to hook up with a girl and she's waiting for his turn, or she really likes the guy and hopes he'll see that she's wonderful and great and can win him over. It doesn't work. Acquaintances, Yes. Friends actually hang out together and do stuff? No. And of course, a lot of these guys are being used. I end up being suspicious, so I decide to actually look at our phone bill. Detailed billing on our landline. Lots of calls to and from a number that I didn't know. I went to the local library and looked up the, the phone number, and it was one of her high school ex-boyfriends that she did not tell me she was talking to. So this is the thanks he gets for paying all the bills and moving in with her and moving near where she lives as opposed to where he lives. Real nice, huh? But he was the nice guy. I went home and confronted her. She immediately reversed re reversed on it, reversed on me, saying how I was being controlling and invading her privacy. Isn't it funny, guys? So when I do these stories, the knee-jerk reaction is always kind of the same thing. How dare you? You're controlling. You're trying to run my life. You don't trust me. That type of crap. I was dumbfounded, invading her privacy by looking at the phone bill the phone bill that you pay for. Anyway, this was the moment I knew for a fact that she had to be having an affair. She began to shower me with lots of love and affection. The bedroom time was making me doubt my suspicions, but that nagging feeling would not go away. So she knew by suddenly just showering you with the attention, love, and her body that that would probably get you to change your mind on these things. Eight oldest trick in the book. I ended up logging on her computer one night after she fell asleep. Back then, all emails were stored on the hard drive of the computer. I copied the data file to a floppy. I didn't have her password, but if you open the data file with a text editor, and he says notepad, you can read the emails between all the garbage and stuff. 
The next day at work, I read the emails, had everything confirmed, meetups, explicit admissions on their SEX life, their future plans, mocking me, etc. That sucks, man. I mean, I'm glad he trusted his suspicions, but just imagine that. He'd been with her for a long time, and in his mind, he's like, what am I doing wrong? We were been together for years. I treat her great. I pay all the bills. Why would you do this to me? Well, that's a lot of the reason, amongst other things that aren't being mentioned here. What scared me the most was her email stating that she wished that I was a member of the Heaven's Gate, a C-U-L-T, that was that just committed a mass ending themselves in order to catch a ride on a UFO that was supposedly t- telling a comet that was passing near Earth. For those of you guys who don't know what that is, back, I believe it was 1997 in the spring, out of nowhere in the news, you heard about this, this mass group of people, a C-U-L-T, all off themselves when this hail bop I believe that's what it was called, a uh, comet was flying past the Earth. And they thought it was a UFO, and by offing themselves, their spirits would be caught on the UFO and go off to some planet or something ridiculous like that. I remember that very well. I was 19 years old. We finally got the internet in my house, in my parents' house. Uh, and then we just got a computer and got the internet for the first time. And I, me- I was literally setting up the freaking Dell computer as this was going across the news. I'll never forget that. Anyhow... She wanted him to be part of the mass cult that off themselves. She wouldn't have to deal with him. Real nice, huh? Uh, the woman who I was supporting was disrespecting me, and I, and was seeing, and was seeing I was red. The moment forever changed me. I went home and con- confronted her with printouts of her emails. She w- she went instantly into a panic. Said she'd do anything to make it up to me. She blocked the other guy's numbers on our landline. Blocked his email. Deleted the IRC, a chat program off of her, of her computer. The age old, I'll do anything to make up for it. Whatever you want. I want an honest woman. I want someone that's loyal, that's going to treat me well, that's going to uh, reciprocate the great treatment I've been treating, I've been giving her. But what I want you to do is get the hell out of here. That's what I want. Age old reaction. First, they freak out and blame me for being controlling and all that, which you saw. Then when the guy actually has physical proof, then it's the waterworks and I'll do whatever you want and forgive me and all that shit. Our apartment lease was coming up for renewal and I elected to inform the complex I would not renew. I then informed my ex-girlfriend that I was moving out and I couldn't get past what she did. She didn't, she needed to move in with her parents. I expected her to be gone by 8 PM that night on her way out. I tossed her the key in the mailbox. She could get her stuff this weekend. Good for you. Thank God you at least I'm sure it hurt, but saw the evidence there, and now you knew 100%, and that's it. You're done. And I'm sure that changed you forever. I drove to the library. I then decided to email my girlfriend's parents, all her friends, her affair partner, with with an email with all the evidence I had. Oh, revenge is a dish best served cold, huh? I knew her affair partner had a girlfriend also by the emails. I decided to try to find her, and after looking around in the white pages, I found her number. I ended up calling her and asking if she was dating that guy's name, that guy. When she said yes, I told her that we need to talk and I and could she meet me at the library. I need to tell her something and give her proof of what I was going to tell her. She instantly knew it was about her boyfriend cheating. I told her not to talk to her boyfriend before meeting me. She came to meet me in under 30 minutes. Notice this girlfriend immediately just, well, I guess my boyfriend's cheating. She already knew. She knew he was the type. Now, what does that say about her maybe about the type of guy she goes for? I ended up telling her about my girlfriend and her boyfriend hooking up and showing her all the emails that I had. I logged into my email and showed her who I I had exposed the affair to. As luck would have it, her boyfriend responded to my email and basically said, Sorry, dude. I was just using her for SEX. His girlfriend just about blew a fuse. I forwarded his email to my ex-girlfriend and her parents. So the guy flat out admits, hey, I was just using her for hooking up. But... For extra fun, icing on the cake. He sent that guy's email to the girl, too, so she could see that flat out. And her parents. Fast forward to the weekend, the ex came over and got her stuff. She looked destroyed. She offered to do anything to get back together. I simply said, I'll think about it. That's karma. That's what you get. This, this great guy is taking care of everything, being a great loyal boyfriend to you, taking care of all the bills, move close to be near your hometown versus his, together for years, loyal, sweet, kind, and this is how you repay him. And then now the, the guy you're hooking up with, he's just using you. 
Ha ha. And of course, the the the, the final Hail Mary, last ditch effort, I'll do anything to make it up to you and fix this. You want to do anything? Get the F out. A month later, I packed up my stuff and moved 1,500 miles away. Well, so much for thinking about it. I did learn a lot from that ordeal. I am a relationship guy. I date a lot of girls after her, and let me tell you, having a backbone and being willing to leave is the most powerful tools we have when it comes to relationships. Yes. This is something that the nice guys will never get or be able to do because they're programmed to be so nice. When a guy is willing to just completely walk away, and I don't just mean like that moment if there's a fight or a problem, but just in general from the relationship, she knows that she can't push him too far, that he's gone, he's out of there, and he can replace her. Or better yet, the guy's perfectly fine on his own, doesn't need a chick. That's the most powerful thing you can do. So if you relationship guys, and you're still been programmed and brainwashed by your nice guy stuff, if you're ever out somewhere, let's just say a dispute rises beyond just communication, a fight goes on, and she starts going from trying to communicate to acting really nasty and rude and disrespectful. I don't care if you're in your own apartment or your home or at the gym or in the parking lot in front of Starbucks. If she's getting disrespectful and loud and just acting like an ass, leave. Walk away. Leave her there. Some of you are like, oh, God, I can't do that. Why not? Oh, she'll run out and cheat on me. Well, she's probably cheating on you anyway. You leave. That's what the bad boys do or guys that have value. That's it. And also getting it known that you could leave at any time or place. That's a very powerful motivator because women want guys that are free relationship guys that definitely that value themselves, have a backbone, don't take any crap from anyone or her. This is why nice guys repel them because they know nice guys are just saying, doing anything they can to just win her favor. That means she knows they're full of crap and they will put up with all this crap just because that, that they have no other options. They don't want, the gals don't want a guy that, a, a guy that had that no other woman wants. They want a guy that a girl, the girls do want, but like not physically trying to take him in front of them, but are to see him as a prize. So by you having <clears throat> the ability to walk away when whatever happens, it shows them that, uh, guess what? You do have value. You are a high value guy or in the bad boy category. You know, a lot of people think that, oh, that if you do certain things, therefore you're the, you know, quote unquote bad boy. Not necessarily. It's just that you just don't take any crap. You can find the happy medium between a good guy and the bad boy, right in the middle. Anyhow, and this guy found his happy medium. <clears throat> it says, the older I got, the easier it was to hook up. I went to work, bought nice clothes, went to the gym, and went for jogs. I made life about what I wanted. That's the other quality. You put yourself first. You put the girls last, you put yourself first, do what you want, when you want, etc., etc. Now, if you got a girlfriend and she is treating you well and loyal and supportive and all that, okay, then you can reciprocate that good behavior. I'm not saying you're being in a relationship or you're being these harsh guys, but if it's if it's reciprocated and she treats you well and is loving and sweet and takes care of herself, that's another area, then you can certainly reciprocate in kind and treat her well, but not too well. I'm not talking walking around with flowers all the time. I'm not talking about telling her I love you every 30 seconds. Yeah, that ridiculous crap you're seeing to you putting her on the pedestal. Because the second you start doing that, all of a sudden they're going to start backing off. It's going to turn them off. I, I know it sounds crazy, but it, it is what it is. It says, I'd go to bars to meet women and just start telling them what I want from them. I didn't beat around the bush. I'd tell them they need to come over to my place so I could have breakfast with them the next morning. As dumb as it sounds, it worked many times than not. I became the bad boy, I guess you could say. No longer died by flowers or gifts for women. Basically, I stopped kissing their butts. There you go. Being able to walk away, stop putting yourself first, and stop kissing their butts. That's it. And notice he said in the bars and all that when you meet the girls, he was very direct to what he wanted. Nice guys aren't direct. They beat around the bush. They don't get to the point. Guys that are bad boys or assertive guys that don't give a crap, they say exactly what they want. If they don't get it, fine. They'll go on to some other girl. And that's considered to be attractive. I let my guard down many years ago. I met a girl who took off with my heart. She wanted to be my life. I told her about me being cheated on previously. I also told her she really wants to be with me. She could have to, have to agree to something. 
I told her men and women cannot be just friends. If she wanted to be with me, she couldn't have any male friends, no exceptions. I told her sooner or later, one of them thinks SEX. I'm not going to be betrayed again. If she could not accept this, she could, she could go see someone else. Good. Take it or leave it attitude. I also told her I don't believe in girls' nights out. I can't tell you how many girls I hooked up with on the girls' nights out. They are looking for action, and if you're confident and give them the prospect that you can have a wild time with them that night, they more than, more times than not will go home with you. Exactly. It's sad, but it's that's how it is. My new lady agreed to all this, signed a prenup, and we have been together and married for nearly 20 years. She knows to this day I'm still willing to walk if she's being unreasonable. Good. This is why you have such a good thing going with her. Because again, just like when you learned back in the day, you're out of there. Guys, a lot of things, the things I talk about in this channel all the time, when I, I go through stories and articles and I give my pieces of advice and wisdom, this is stuff I've gained over the years. In particular, from doing making all the mistakes when I was younger. And so I'm not just pulling these things out of my butt or out of thin air. These are things that I've learned and have experienced and know at work. And let me tell you, when they know you can walk and replace them in a heartbeat or just you don't need them at all, unbelievably powerful, just like you said. That's where you want to be, guys. But a lot, I know it scares the crap out of a lot of you guys because, oh, I could never do that. Yeah, you can. She knows I will divorce her immediately if she contacts any ex or if I ever catch her one-on-one -on -one with a guy. I told her these are an absolute deal breaker for me. She'll even admit she respects me because I don't put up with her crap. Let me repeat that one more time. She even admits that she respects me because I don't put up with her crap. See? You respect yourself. You don't tolerate BS. Again, it doesn't mean you're walking around being a jerk or being uh, harsh or, or mistreating. No, not at all. It's simply you're not going to tolerate any disrespect. End of story. You're a man that respects himself and commands respect. Pretty simple. A lot of guys think it's so complicated. It really isn't, guys. Put yourself first, be willing to walk, and not put them on a pedestal. To this day... To this day, she will not go to happy hour or after work dinners with her co-workers. I might sound harsh, but I've done my best not to get cheated on. I do treat her good, but she knows I will leave if she breaks my trust. Good. She willingly gives me all her passwords and, and access to all her stuff. Likewise, she has the same access to mine. Will she ever cheat? I seriously doubt it. We both are nearly 50 years old. She has commented that much younger women check me out and approach me to talk. Well, that's good she notices that because it shows that women find you attractive. Therefore, you are a catch. She knows my options are still available. I tell her I will be faithful to her as long as she's faithful and open to me. Sounds fair. She knows the older she gets, the less options she has. She has some female friends who got divorced in their 40s, and they comment they can't find guys to date. I told them guys are looking for younger girls who would... Who would they go for an older girl unless the older girl is a side piece? Yeah, I know women now in their 40s that, believe me, I mean, they look good for their 40s. They can get a guy to hook up with, but they have a very hard time actually getting anything serious beyond that because they waited too long. Meanwhile, they were knockouts in their 20s and 30s, and they had unlimited options. And these are the same ones that cry because they can't have, they don't have a family and husband and all that stuff and kids. Well, these are the same ones that thought so highly of themselves that they thought there was always a better option around the corner and just went through guys like Kleenex. And then they get to their 40s, and all of a sudden it's like, <whistles> the guys don't want them anymore. I mean, they, they would want them for a side piece, like it mentions here, but like 40s, 30s, 20s. Guy has options, what are you going to go for? Duh. Now the guy may be able to have more things in common with the gals in his 40s if he's in his 40s and 50s, but uh, he can find a girl he clicks with very well in her 30s or 20s. They're rare. I think a lot of gals in their 20s, pretty much under 27, are a bunch of pinheads, and I wouldn't have any, really know what to talk to them about nowadays. Talk about what, Kim Kardashian or TikTok? But anyhow, you get my point. I told them guys are looking... I read that part. He says, I like channels like yours to keep me frost, frosty on uh, red flags and danger signs. Like a former alcoholic uses AA to stay sober. I use these channels to watch for red flags. For all you guys out there that struggle with the gals, uh, big advice I can give you is grow a backbone. Be direct. 
be confident, be willing to walk and work out. Yes, let me read that again. Grow backbone. Backbone means you stand up for yourself. Don't take any crap. You go for what you want. Be direct and confident. Direct. In the bars, and he's talking to the gals, he was telling exactly what he wanted. Nice guys beat around the bush. Guys actually have their shit together. They're direct with what they want. Confident, that's self-explanatory. And be willing to walk. I really got into that earlier, so I don't need to do that more, but you got my point. Lose the nice guy stuff. Even my wife will admit she's attracted to me because I take charge, I don't take crap, and I'm confident. There you go. Real life example. The guy's 50 years old. A lot of life experience. He learned the hard way. So you see here, guys, like I said in the beginning, typical nice guy in the beginning. Look where that got him. Flip the script, if you will, after he learned a very hard lesson, painful lesson, and look how things have gone since. So where do you want to be? Do you want to be the guy he was in the beginning, or do you want to be the guy he is now? Learn from all these examples, guys. You all can do it. Because I know I like all our relationship guys that watch me here. And mark my words, you're not going to change this way overnight. Most guys won't. But you start employing these things, you're going to see better results. And for you guys that have just said, that's it, I'm done with them, well, this is good entertainment and proves the point why you're done with them because you got better shit to deal with in your life. No problem. More power to you. So, all right, guys, that is it for today. I hope you all enjoyed it. Be sure to comment down below. Let me know what you think about this. And, guys, as per usual, as I always say, if you got anything really good you want to send me, if you came across a great article, I've been getting a lot of personal stories lately, and I love the personal stories, but also I could use some good articles. So if you find good articles that definitely make good things for me to cover in this channel, by all means, send me links to those articles, as well as definitely share your personal stories, things you went through, things you overcame, good things that we, the type of stuff I usually do on this channel, because we all like it. And of course, if you ever come across any crazy stories online, those are definitely good ones to share too. Send over my email address. It is in the about section of this channel. And be sure to like the video, share with your friends, and subscribe. And I'll catch you next time.